Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today we're going to be talking about the present and future of The Division 2. The game's next major update, Year 5 Season 3, is set to drop very soon, scheduled for this Tuesday, February 6th. And alongside its usual seasonal content offerings, this update also delivers Project Resolve, and that is primarily what I want to recap and present to anyone thinking about potentially returning to the game. Resolve focuses on some core elements, namely game optimization, improving the stability and day-to-day -day reliability of the experience, progression, decreasing the costs and grind for some of the game's endgame progression systems, as well as redesigning their UI and functionality to be more accessible, and lastly, fun, with big buffs coming to the game's underperforming weapons, gear brands, and talents to enhance build variety, as well as upgrades to things like the game's rotating global events, and much more. It's these three elements, alongside the laid out roadmap for where the game is headed in the coming months and updates, that lead me to conclude that this is an optimal time for anybody who's been considering coming back to The Division 2, or anyone who's thinking about jumping in for the first time. So, we're going to break down all of that in the video, and if you end up enjoying it and find this information useful, I would be beyond appreciative of you hitting that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I've got much more Division content coming your way next week with the update and in the future. So, jumping right in, I want to tackle this video by answering two different questions that together I believe will summarize pretty much everything you need to know. Firstly, why exactly right now is an ideal time to return to or join the Division 2? And secondly, because of that, what is changing to make it that opportune moment? Beginning with that first question, The Division 2 and this overall genre of live service looter shooters, they can, without question, be daunting to think about getting back into or joining onto for the first time. Especially one like The Division 2 that's been out for nearly five years now. A lot of content has gotten released over time, a lot of systems have changed, balancing passes, new items, there's a lot to consider. And while all of those things have happened for the game over the past many seasons and years, Year 5 Season 3 and Project Resolve coming with it are doing things a little bit differently. Instead of drafting drastically reshaping all of the forward-facing systems of the game requiring players to relearn everything, it's actually doing kind of the opposite. And it also begins a new roadmap that sets the game on a path to dramatically improve with the updates to come. Let me explain a little bit. Although Project Resolve has a ton of gameplay and player experience-related changes that it's bringing, that's actually not its primary goal. As outlined by the developers, the main purpose of Project Resolve is to establish a solid foundation for the game that they intend to build upon for several updates, seasons, and years to come. And that's happening in a few ways. For one, The Division 2 has struggled with its technical reliability for a while now, ever since there was a development team rebuilding done behind the scenes. Because of that, bugs, delays, and other issues have become pretty commonplace in new content releases due to these new ideas being placed upon an old foundation that had become outdated. So, in the dev's words, Resolve re tools that infrastructure to be able to more reliably handle the new content they're making, and they've said that the work done in this update was necessary to ensure a successful future for the game. Alongside that, they've also made big strides in game stability. PC players in particular have been facing crashing issues for a few years now, and server disconnects among other issues have plagued all other platforms as well. Some progress has been made to alleviate these issues over time, but according to the developers, Resolve will mostly, if not fully, eliminate these legacy issues that we've had. And beyond all of that, other general game optimizations and improvements have been claimed to be made overall, allowing the game to run better and more reliably than it has in a long time. So, that's obviously a lot of work done to make the core of the game better, but the big question is, why have they invested so much into this? Well, we then get to the longer-term plan for the game. Another very valid concern for players when it comes to older live service games like this is that, am I going to invest all of this time to get caught up in a game only for them to announce that further content is ending? In the case of The Division 2, the answer is, fortunately, no. Project Resolve sets a solid foundation for the game because The Division 2 has some big plans moving forward. The first arrives in later 2024, where the team will be delivering Seasons 2.0, now this does a multitude of things, some of which we of course don't yet know about, but in general, it will revamp the seasonal content system to make it more dynamic and engaging, and alongside this, they're also going to be restructuring the entire Division 2 endgame. Again, the full scope of changes we still don't know, but what we do know is that they aim to go in and make each individual endgame activity worthwhile to play, meaning re-incentivizing the reward and uniqueness of each mode. They're also going to be introducing a new item type, injecting some new farmable pieces into the loot pool to spice up build crafting and diversity. Diversity. So that comes later in 2024, and then, slated for early 2025, the game is set to receive an all-new story DLC. We'll be going to brand new locations in Brooklyn, New York, with new open-world exploration, main missions and storyline, and all of the bells and whistles that come with that kind of a premium content release. 
That is also not the end, however, because with the announcements and hubbub around Project Resolve, the devs have also basically confirmed that more content will come after the Brooklyn DLC. So it's clear that The Division 2 still has a long and well-scoped future ahead of it, and Project Resolve is really the foundation and first step for that all to occur. And so, instead of jumping in between one of those big releases and changes in the future, I am of the opinion that right now is the time to get in, get familiar with the game, progress your agent, and prepare for what's to come. And so, now let's get into that second question I was talking about earlier. Resolve is doing a lot of great things for the game behind the scenes, but how does my actual day-to-day -day experience with The Division 2 improve, specifically from the perspective of a new or returning player? Well, also good news here, it does so in a number of ways. It's impossible to cover every little change they're making to the core game, but I'm just going to go down the list here and name off all of the major ones. Concerning endgame gear progression, several changes here. Optimization and recalibration, which are two different systems and paths to upgrade your gear's power and potential, have now been rolled into one menu with a much cleaner and comprehensible layout. The material costs for optimization specifically have seen reductions. And similarly, the expertise system, which is known for its immense grind and cost to upgrade items, has seen major reductions in cost. And you can now access all of these menus on the go wherever you are in the game, so no need for those frequent trips back to the base with full bags anymore. Along the same line, and contributing to making these grinds easier, projects, the Division 2's form of daily and weekly quests, have been revamped. Objectives have been made more diverse and easier depending on which ones you look at, and the rewards have been notably increased. Like how different quantities of exotic components, a rare endgame material, will now be awarded, so projects' viability and desirability to engage with should now be much higher. On a similar note, open world loot crates and containers will now scale their rewards depending on your selected world difficulty, meaning exploration and farming in the open world on higher difficulties just became way more relevant again. Global events have always been a division staple, they are global modifiers that rotate in and out each season, offering players enhanced powers to earn greater rewards. Out of the Division 2 six global events, five of them have always felt a bit underwhelming compared to the landslide community favorite Golden Bullet, and now Project Resolve aims to fix that. By drastically buffing and reworking the functionalities to those other five events with the goal of making each of them as fun, powerful, and worthwhile as Golden Bullet is, and with the reward structure of these events already being quite solid, this should be a great change. Build diversity across the board is also aiming to improve by a lot, and that's because a major balancing pass is coming with Project Resolve. Five of the seven weapon types in the game are being addressed, with big buffs coming to all of the underperforming weapons in those categories. And by modifying these weapons' damage values, RPM, and mag size, the devs aim to even the playing field with weapon reselection. Similarly, high-end gear brands are getting looked at, with the majority of the three-piece bonuses, but some of the two-pieces as well, depending on their relative power, getting big buffs to incentivize brand investment, as well as just promote new build ideas. And on top of that, a number of exotic and regular gear talents are getting a balance pass, with some enhancing their functionality and some just providing straight-up buffs. Descent, the game's standalone roguelite mode, is also seeing improvements, adding rewards to its shop for increasing the desirability to play the mode, shortening the time it takes to reach the pinnacle fight the nemesis, and more. And if you're into PvP, Project Resolve will be the best time there's been to play it in years. The devs are implementing some major reworks to status effects, which have dominated the experience for far too long. Each status now has an innate counterplay mechanic that you can engage with in combat, and they're implementing a diminishing return system so that repeat applications lessen in their severity. On top of this, they're also implementing some other much-needed PvP fixes and balancing efforts, and they're also looking to make the dedicated PvP mode conflict far more enjoyable. Firstly, by removing the SHD and expertise bonuses while playing, this will make the mode far more accessible for people to jump in while still respecting player build choice and power. They're addressing some balancing within the mode with spawn camping deterrence and gear locking when in combat, and the XP earned for playing the mode is being dramatically buffed while they're also enhancing the rewards to be of the same quality you earned for playing legendary difficulty PvE content, so it should be far more rewarding to play Conflict. So, like I said, that is a lot of changes coming, and it's not even the full extent. As is probably clear by now, Project Resolve aims to make every bit of The Division 2 that it can more streamlined, accessible, and fun. And in total, I think this update will make the day-to-day -day experience of playing the game far more attractive and enjoyable. And it also sets the game up quite nicely to expand upon this renewed foundation in the more ambitious updates down the road that we talked about earlier. In conclusion, Project Resolve is the time to return to or join The Division 2. Players are going to be more rewarded for their time than ever, gameplay experiences across PvE and PvP will now feel better than ever, and it's only going up from here. My friends, that is my recap and breakdown of The Division 2's coming update for anybody contemplating coming back to the game. 
I sincerely hope it helped contextualize and explain everything that is going on and what you can expect. Any additional questions you may have on the matter, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I will be happy to respond. And that's going to do it for me today, everybody. I will see you all in game next week when Project Resolve goes live. But until then, thank you all so much for watching. Rogue Gold. Ow.